Ask me how I got this scar on my nose. I got into a fight, or attacked by a raccoon, or sometimes it's not your business, or my mom always told me to say that I fell off of our trampoline like it's less weird than what actually happened, or how would falling off of a trampoline make this shape anyway? Well, the truth is, I've made some of these stories up to fuck with people, and I have weaved others out of my mother's shame, the heaviest grief that I carry. It was the 4th of July, and no, it wasn't a firework. I was four years old, and no, it didn't hurt. I remember the dog's fear when I tried to pet him, his quick fight response, remember blood running down my face and shrieking, my father's bud light heavy on his judgment. He let me wander into the garage unattended, a 911 call, an ambulance siren, cold doctor's hand stitching, home, a hospital blanket, and no fireworks. I still fucking love dogs, and I love fireworks, and don't fear my own blood, and don't blame my father for what happened, and sometimes I forget this scar is the first thing people see when they look at me because I know it like childhood. I was also four years old when I insisted to my mom I was a boy. I cannot remember a time before scar and transness. I grew intimate with cosmetologist offices as a kid, doctors prodding my nose with gloved hands like fairy godmothers they spoke of how when I was older they would use lasers to shrink my scar into a sliver. My mom talked about the surgery as often as my unkempt curly hair, my body big in all of the wrong places, my tomboyishness and my crooked teeth. I can't remember a time before this queerness, the way it has always spilled from me. Years later, mi mamá dragged me to Mexico for a photo shoot. She paid professional photographers to airbrush my scar away, along with my braces, tease, straighten my hair, create Cinderella miracles for just one day. Erase this blood stain on her motherhood. I never wore dresses, but her daughter might have. Our living room is an altar. These photos hang like ghosts there, and I am the elephant in the room whenever I sit with them. I wonder what she will do with the photos when I tell her that I am transgender. Heard some parents tuck old photographs into boxes, like laying to rest a casket or putting a child to sleep. She talks about taking them down sometimes. I think she sees the incongruence. In pictures, I am straight hair, straight teeth, straight girl, girl, girl. Out here, I am unkempt, undercut, teeth not quite straight, even after correction. Boy, boy, boy. When I began growing into boy, I told me a mom, I don't want my scar fixed. The thousands of dollars could go to hormones, I thought, or top surgery. My braces were eventually taken off. I cut my hair. I wear button-ups and dark jeans now. This scar has withstood the test of transition. I notice how it fades at the edges every year, like a photograph. It's beautiful to me how it once screamed bright red and settled into brown. I wonder if the rest of my scars will do the same. I wonder if our relationship will ever settle too, Mom. Ama, scars are an acquired love, like the rest of ourselves. Shame, unfortunately, is the inheritance, and we are both heirs to it. I am still rewriting our shame from my body. I want you to know I still love dogs and fireworks and I do not fear my own blood and I don't blame you for what happened and some people will look at me differently when this is all I have ever known. But I promise, I am so happy. Thank you.